Hi, I'm the Alloy Geek. In this video, we're going to take a look at the PSYOPS Z902 Handheld Libs Metal Analyzer. Now, this Libs device here is set up to use Argon. If yours is an Airburn device, which is fancy language for saying doesn't use Argon, that's okay too. Just ignore the tips about Argon. Um, if you do have Argon, you have to use Argon to run this unit, so make sure you've got one of these little cylinders here, which I will talk about Argon management in another video. But let's get you through your first few readings with the uh, handheld libs device here, the Z902. And uh, without further ado, here we go. So I'm gonna mirror my screens to be able to see kind of what I'm talking about. The startup procedure is pretty straightforward. You basically hold the power button on the top for a couple of seconds. And after you do that, you're going to go into your device and you're going to log in. The, it's the standard admin and then the password being one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's pretty standard. That'll work for pretty much every unit out there. I believe you can set up your own passwords otherwise. So now that you're in your unit, you may not get to the analyze screen before it says what you see here, which is warm up. So we're gonna have to warm this unit up before we even begin testing. And um, there's a couple other things on the screen here we should talk about. If you have an Argon unit like this one, you see that little gray screen with the white text at 13.3, that's PSI. That is the pressure of Argon that is being detected by the instrument. If that's red, flashing, or something else, uh, you may have an empty Argon tank, something like that. And then also the, the temperature of the actual uh, laser diode itself is in blue. That needs to be around 26 degrees Celsius. You'll see that in a second. We'll hit warm up on the screen here. Okay, now it says uh, warming up, right? Laser is now in use. So it's a great time while it's warming up to talk about safety. So I have a pair of laser safety glasses here. Um, I'm not required to wear them and uh, I'm not gonna wear them for the sake of this video, but you may be required to wear them based on your state regulation, your local government regulation or your safety culture or, or officer in your company may say, hey, you need to, to, to wear them. So this is a class 3B laser. It is totally contained in the unit right now. So it is not firing outside of that. And you just need to be aware uh, of what's going on. So the unit is pulsing the laser internally and it is just doing so to heat it up. The reason you wanna heat this up to 26 degrees Celsius is because a stable, constant temperature is where you get your best results. So it's about getting good data from your unit that that's the reason it's doing this. It's not just trying to make you wait, it's trying to do the best it can. So it's saying it wants to run a second warm up cycle. We're gonna do that. You can see we're at almost, we're almost there. We're almost at the temperature so far. So we're getting there pretty quickly. Now it, it should automatically kick off when it hits the right temperature threshold. It's just gonna wait for that temperature to stabilize a little bit. So in today's video, we're going to take, this is very basic about how you take your first few readings uh, with handheld lips and the do's and don'ts. And it's pretty easy, but um, there's some basic stuff. So you see that in green there, 26.2. And if you'll look here, you'll see it says calibrate, right? It's not ready to go yet. So we'll hit the calibrate button. Okay. What you just saw was the unit actually testing that little that little bump on the top, it looks kind of, it's under that IP address there. Um, that little bump is an internal uh, check standard for the unit itself. So it's happy, everything's good, and now we can actually, um, we can actually start working with this unit. So I'm gonna go to the Analyze screen, and I'm gonna hit Alloy Plus. Yours might say Quick Sort if you have a, a non-Argon unit. And you're gonna take your sample, this is a piece of 6061 bar stock that I got from an aluminum mill. I'm gonna hold my sample. I can hold it in my hand because this is not x-ray. And I'm gonna press the trigger one time to do the analysis. And while I'm doing this analysis, I need to hold still. Okay, so you heard and you saw that on the screen. So what you just saw was this device actually doing a laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, that's what LIB stands for, test. And then that, the results that you got are a direct result of not only your surface prep, but the material underneath that. So if you have a clean sample like this one, it's maybe kind of hard to see, but this is a shiny sample where I've actually taken a grinder and polished the end. This is a great sample to test. If you end up with paint or other things like that, this device will not be able to shoot through that. You're gonna need a nice clean sample to start. And so we had that with this sample, and if you have that with your metal samples, you're gonna have no problems. 
And that's it. If you just point and shoot, you're ready to go. Now, how can you make these results better? Or if the temperature wildly swings in your facility, you're gonna to wanna to do something called intensity calibration. And I have another video on that. It's actually done with an air burn unit, but the same principles apply with an argon unit. You may have different intensity calibration samples. They come in a little container that looks like, like a tackle box. And um, there'll be various elements, or various alloys, excuse me. And this is, for example, 3003 aluminum. And there's three other aluminums in here. A 6061 aluminum, a 7050 aluminum, and an A356 aluminum. Each one of those check samples is gonna calibrate the intensity for certain elements within the aluminum family. So if you were doing an intensity calibration or you're starting your day, it may be good to do that. And so when you do your intensity calibration, you just go up here to drift correction. It's okay, so when I hit drift correction, you saw I just did a little bit of a, a test there real quick. It's gonna always do that wavelength correction first. And then it's gonna go into drift correction. You can see AL or aluminum, right? You can see them the last time that was checked. And you can see all of these samples here. And you would just go down the line and run these uh, before you run for the day. And while that might be a little bit of setup, it's a lot less setup than something like a, a benchtop OES and it will give you the best results. You saw that this unit works very well out of the box without that, but if your temperature swings wildly, like you're in a foundry or it's in the winter in a foundry and you have the extremes of being 142 degrees inside the building and maybe, you know, negative 10 degrees outside the building, that would be a case where you would wanna do that intensity calibration depending on where you were using the unit itself. So now I'm gonna go, back. we're in alloy plus mode here. So um, some things to keep in mind, Always watch and manage your argon. I'll have another video on argon management here in a second. And then the other thing is on the front of your analyzer, you'll notice I just approached the sample really quick, right? There is this, this hole here on the bottom. That's actually the camera. So this can take macro pictures. Up here, you'll see if I cover with my finger, that is what you're viewing on the screen. And that's actually uh, where the laser is gonna hit. So you'll be able to see your sample surface. Make sure you're targeting clean metal with this device. Again, just pull the trigger one time and it does all the work for you just like that and so you'll see here like in no time at all we're able to get light elements and heavy elements in one reading really fast with high precision that's why handheld libs is great so um that's all i have for you guys today if you're just starting out hopefully this was, video was helpful i'll link to some of the other videos i mentioned um down in the description of this video and you know up here in the corners of the video as we go along um, but uh, that's pretty much it libs is one of my favorite technologies to analyze metals and i hope it works out for you and if you have any questions you're always welcome to reach out to us at alloygeek.com thanks thanks for watching we'll see you guys next time